So let's take a look at the PBR3 mechanism. So what if we wanted, so just kind of a more modern reagent. So way to think about it, like HBr or zinc chloride or HCl, those are pretty harsh reagents. So maybe if we wanted to use something a little le more mild, a little more compatible with maybe different functional groups, if you have a big complex molecule, you use something like PBR3. So it's a little milder reagent. I'm not saying it's mild, but it's milder than HBr. Um, and it's another way to add bromines, to activate the alcohol and then add bromines. So again, the first step always is what? The alcohol is the nucleophile. In all of these cases, now I draw out three, drew out three cases, a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary alcohol. So it turns out the tertiary ones, we're going to get no reaction here. Or at least nothing productive that we want. It won't work. That's because PBR3 involves an SN2 mechanism. We just got done talking, right, or thinking about a tertiary carbon is too sterically hindered for an SN2 reaction to take place. So what's the first step in this reaction? You can imagine the phosphorus with three bromines pulling on it. It's going to be pretty electron deficient. So we'll attack that. Kick out a bromine. So like an SN2 reaction. Balance our charge plus charge on the oxygen. So then similar to before, now we've activated the alcohol. Before, it was, we just turned the alcohol essentially into a water leaving group. Now we've turned into this phos phosphate, phosphate, phosphite, right, to react. So this is a good leaving group. There's an oxygen with a plus charge. It's electron deficient. This bond gets weaker. Bromine's a good nucleophile. We're just going to do an SN2 again. And that'll get us to our substituted product. OH PBR2. And there's actually two more bromines left there. So you could, right, so it's a three to one ratio. So for every one of these, it'll react with three alcohols. So it also saves you, saves you a reagent, right? So it, a lot more bang for your buck there. But then it does a substitution. No different with the secondary alcohols, but now this can get a little more complicated if this was an asymmetric center. Because again, we're doing an SN2 reaction. So let's just, maybe I'll, I'll change the situation here. Maybe I'll make this, uh, no. Make that an ethyl. And I'll make this wedged. So I'll make that a stereo center now. So now what's the product going to look like? I'm not going to do the mechanism. What's the product going to look like? It should be inverted. Right? So it should be inverted. So the product should be then well, one way you could draw it. So if it was RS, I'm not going to go through if it's RS. It's S. So now it needs to be R and it's R because it went through an SN2 reaction. So you've got to be cognizant of those SN2 reactions there because you have an inversion. But again here, you might be able to do this first step and get the thing on there, but then because there's no way you can do an SN2 on a tertiary alcohol, it's not, not, it's not going to work, so there's going to be no reaction. The key here is this SN2 of these secondary ones. That's when you've got to be kind of paying attention because the stereochemistry can become involved there.